I'm a technical guru, so <laughs> I will find a way to get around my bad eyes. Okay, and this is it. Not the before, the after, as you can see. The genders are eliminated. I'm going to disable the color group. And now we are going to check it. I don't know if you can see it, but there was a slight magenta hue in those shadows that I just eliminated. Now it even looks slightly green, because uh, we did too much work. Yeah, that, w that looks just fine. Okay. Of course we would have to do this for all the colors, that means the magentas, the blues, the cyans, the greens, the yellows, the reds. And because I'm pretty lazy, I just recorded an action to do all that stuff for us. And I'm going to show you that in just a couple of seconds. But first I'm going to show you um, another technique, so-called solo curves. So I'm going to use a new curves adjustment layer, call that one solar curves. And in these curves I'm going to more or less randomly do some tonal variation to increase the contrast between the colors. That way, as we can clearly see, all the defects in our image stand out very brightly. For example, here on his nose, it's a little spot. Hear that? Hear that one, that spot, that spot. All those spots are that were very hard to see before now stand out very bright. And you can see them very easily. So to fix those, I'm going to create a new layer once again. Call that one Heal, or let's call it Repair. I'm going to use a clone stamp. Sample should be current and below. It should not be all layers. If you have to choose all layers, then please check this box here. Otherwise you will get pretty interesting results. So now I'm going to fix this level area here. Oops, did too much. Fix that one here as well. You can see it's really easy to see all the defects now because um, everything is just so bright and every little change in tonality just stands out. So that makes it very easy to see everything. And of course you don't have to stick with those curves, you can just do whatever you want to. You can, for example, create this one. Make this one go here. Maybe go into the individual channels and create something weird as this. Um, it's all up to you. Different curves will show you different uh, effects, so it's just a thing of experimentation. So, but I told you before. I'm pretty lazy, so I recorded an action to do to set up all the necessary steps. That one is it. Support layers. This one creates the luminosity group with the desaturate and the darken. Here's the saturation. Everything set up correctly, so you don't have to change anything. You can just 
work with it. And here are all the different hue detectors and the light and layer above it to make everything more visible. But I would further like to show you a thing. Something pretty interesting in my opinion. And this is the luminosity layer. In fact, um, it doesn't make any difference if you have the luminosity layer enabled or disabled when you're work working with the selective color. But disabling all the selective color layers and the lighten layer of course will give you all the color on this one layer as I told you before. Now we can combine this preview with our sonar curve and that way we can detect shifts in the hue. To fix these areas I'm going to create, create a new hue saturation adjustment layer call that one hue plus 50 plus 15 mode set to hue and shift the hue to 15. Now you can see areas are getting much lighter so everything that is pretty dark seems to be beneficial to use uh, increased hue. But you have to be careful with this because solar curves can lead to very very um, funny results because um, some areas might look like they are darker and uh, you'd have to lighten them but in fact they're lighter because they're um, in a different range of tones. Okay, this was a nice start. Of course, we can do it the opposite way as well. Hue minus 15, mode set to hue again, and shift the hue to minus 15. Now everything is getting darker. So I'm again creating a new layer mask, a black layer mask, using my white brush to darken those areas and shift the hue in the other direction. Maybe it's a little tricky for you to get the right hue. In that case, just experiment a little. It may take a while, but in my opinion it's worth it. Because um, results are pretty stunning. In retouching I'm often asked how I get my skin looking so good and those are the supporting layers I always use that helped me to get everything just fine. So, let's see what those two layers did for us. Again, I don't know if you can see it. It's subtle changes, but they are still there. For example, here in the area. You can see how that cooled down a little. Again, the most important thing is the luminosity, then there comes the saturation, then the color. That is why I set the groups up in that order. Now, because I'm lazy, I told you so, I don't have just set up my supporting layers in, a action, in an action, but also my fixing layers. So this one fixing layer luminosity will set up the luminosity layer and give me the brush black and white paint fixing layer saturation will create the saturation layer give me the brush 
and red and white paint and fixing layer color will create a new group which has all the individual channels curves uh, with the channels increased or decreased so all the curves are set to hue and have a black and layer mask so that way you can increase or decrease that specific hue or shift the hue altogether with those two layers as I just shown to you. I hope you enjoyed it, learned a thing or two and if you have any questions please feel free to email me at Jonas underline Wendorf at web.de or just ask me in the forums. I'll be glad to help. <laughs> See ya!